Okay, boys and girls and those who haven't decided yet, today we have a big, big Standell amp here. It's a mystery model. The plate over here that's supposed to have the model number has been damaged. Can't tell. But it's a guitar amp with two 15-inch speakers. It's solid state and they're 15-inch speakers and it's got reverb and tremolo, it's got two channels, like kind of like a Fender where the channel on the left is uh, normal, I guess you'd say, and then the channel on the right has reverb and tremolo. Um, rumor has it on these big old standells that the power transistors would go out and barbecue the speakers. I checked the speakers quickly for continuity before I picked it up and that seemed to work. Um, so let's just plug it in and see if it explodes. Um, we'll see what's going on. Okay, so I brought all the volumes down to zero in case this thing's going to make a screech of death. And then we'll try to flip it on. Okay, so the power light just came on for a split second and then it went tick and we have the breaker in the back I think popped. Yep, so it blows the breaker. Alright, so at least we know where we're at with it. An amp that blows the breaker, that could be a lot of things. But, uh, alright, it's a starting point. So, let's uh, tear into it and see what we got. Okay, there's our two big 15-inch speakers. And the manufacturer code on them is 220949. So, 94th week of... Maybe 1969? 1979 seems way too late for this amp, but I suppose it's possible. Um, that would be the speak, the manufacturer, and being that it's the 94th week, that's uh, that's pretty far down the line, right? So it's a Jensen speaker, though. These are Jensen's. Um, 220 is Jensen. So when I put the meter across, they look contiguous. I'm going to check that one more time. Uh, and then we'll pull the head out of here and see what we got. Well, here's some positive news for you, amplifier fans. There's the RCA disconnect to the two speakers, which appear to be in uh, parallel. And we're going to take a dying but still functional 9-volt battery. We'll lay it across there. And... Uh, We get a little click and the speakers jump a small amount. In fact, them both, they both do jump, so that one does and that one down there does. So our speakers are okay. Um, our head has some kind of ugly short in it. This one, instead of having a fuse, it has a circuit breaker up there in the corner. We'll zoom in on the circuit breaker. It looks like we have a model information here. It says S30G, and then whatever's behind that appears to be covered up. Maybe there's more to that. So they called their stuff Artist. Maybe this is like an Artist 30. I don't know. But uh, we'll find out. Or maybe it's S30. I Heck if I know at this point. So we'll pull it apart and see what we have. Uh, inside and look for the obvious before we start going bananas. Okay, here. boys and girls, welcome to an episode of What the Hell Did I Get Myself Into? Um, hmm. Okay, so this has been converted to a three prong plug because it was shocking somebody. So when I think of yeah, I'm shocking somebody, I think of the filter caps being an issue, which there's two big filter caps there, a couple more caps back here. And then we have that. This, I think, is your death cap or your grounding cap or whatever. And they left it in. Because our power switch, you know, it's got one of those flip-flops, which is like the... Um, it had one of the flip-flops, which is like the custom did. And then the other end of this comes back around to common. i got to see if that goes to earth or not. That might very well just be the death cap, but we'll check to see if that's busted but here's the one that blows my mind we got all of these this this is like a plastic snap case that they just took the halves of 
built the circuit and then poured epoxy or something in there and made a module out of it. So we have these five modules. And there's obviously caps in there because you can see them peeking out. We got some poly caps in there and some transistors and crap like that. So if one of those mothers is shorted, we're screwed. Now I don't know why they did it that way. Probably to protect their schematic. Thanks Mr. Dumble for continuing that tradition. Uh, some tropical fish type caps, they call them up there. Um, orange drops. Uh, lots of polys. Polys are good. Uh, a couple of uh, blue astrons over there. Those are all in the tone circuit. Um, and then we come back to the output here. We've got some orange drops. We've got an electrolytic there. And, uh, oh, there we go. December 19, 1969. So this, this is a 69. There you go. Now we know. All right. So tropical fish caps. I'm sure that this is for the bias on the output transistors. Um, our caps. So our caps, if one of our caps is shorted to ground, that would make the most obvious sense as to why uh, this thing is uh, popping the breaker immediately and that's the most common so we'll put a meter across those and see if they actually charge up or if they work or if they're stone dead or, or why. Okay, so I found some schematics. Standell actually is nice enough to give you schematics even for what's in the weird epoxy modules. So 0.02, that would be the def cap. This is supposed to be at least 600 volts. This is like a 1.4K. But this cap, which is 0.022, 400 volt, this cap appears to be shorted. When I put the meter on any of these caps, you know, just when the meter's on ohms, I don't know if you can even see the damn meter. Let's bring the damn meter in a picture. Okay, so it shows one, meaning, you know, too much resistance, right? Or too much unreadable, whatever. Let's short my probes here. Come on, play ball with me. There we go. So roughly zero ohms across here. We're going to come across the death cap. Here I should see infinite ohms, which I do, right? We go together, nothing. If I come across here, I'm seeing almost no resistance, like these two points are shorted. I go across this resistor. This resistor might be very, very high. Let's see what's up with this resistor. Let's go up to a higher setting. Yeah, it's 100, 100K. But let's go back across this. Again, zero. This capacitor, whatever it is, appears to be shorted. So I'm going to... Uh, take it out and check it and see because if that's what it is then okay we'll hurrah. start soldering iron heats up I noticed that somebody took the opportunity to write short on here with a uh, marker and uh, I wonder if this was the same guys who changed the power cord I mean this is a standard changed power cord I don't see anything wrong with that work it looks normal but I think that's our cap so we're gonna take that out of there and then we're gonna test it okay so I got that one out and in checking it, it uh, doesn't pass DC, but it was across two points that uh, effectively are roughly shorted to each other. So that's not it. That's just some kind of filtering capacitor. Um, yep. So we got a couple of things we can do here. Let's check our bridge rectifier for fun. Okay. Diodes. Diode. 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 Okay. Nothing too exciting there. I'm still going to I'm going to put this cap on my little test meter just for fun and see what happens. Yeah, that cap to pass the test in our meter. So, okay, there's something else to go after, but just for my own 
amusement, I might just replace that since it was such a pain in the butt to get out. We'll just put a new one in there for good sake because it looks like the surface might have a crack in it. Okay, boys and girls, so I'm trying to troubleshoot what we got going on for a short here, and my gut is kind of telling me that this, um, this, uh, circuit breaker might just be way too sensitive. Um, I was thinking that for some reason the power transformer itself was uh, shot so I disconnected it from the bridge rectifier and I've got you know if I look at my meter here my input voltage is oh come on you stupid meter just 122 123 volts and we come over here to the output of the transformer and I've got 49.6 50 volts 50 volts so the transformers working okay and it's not getting hot because it doesn't have any load or anything on it so yep I don't know if this is there's a third leg coming out of the transformer and that's the center tap I'm thinking because I got 25 volts here and another 25 volts here so this is a center tapped transformer Okay, so the transformer works. That's a, that's a good sign. I'm curious how strong, because you can see, but just, you know, that'll reset it every time. But I'm sort of curious if what the, what the trip is on that. I might want to, you know, ammeter that and see if we're really getting up to a high draw there, or this is just a bunch of uh, hooey. All right, see in a few. Okay, the more I fidget around in here, the more suspicious I'm being, and unfortunately the uglier I'm making things, because the insulation on the wire doesn't take the heat from the soldering iron that well. Um, so, I disconnected the power transformer and checked it, and I get 50 volts, and that seems fine. Um, this is the power leg that goes back to feed the power transformer, or the power transistors, excuse me. And if anything was going to take a dump, that would take a dump. Um, so the only thing that really is being fed at this point is like the preamp section. That shouldn't even be drawing that much current. And this thing is blowing at like two and a half amps. These caps could potentially be shorted. Maybe something in the preamp is shorted. Or maybe this thing is just hair trigger because it went bad. And the more I fiddle with this, where you reset it and just instantaneously it sees voltage and off it goes, off it goes, off it goes. It, I'm, I'm tempted just to, as a temporary measure, stick a fuse in there and see what the fuse does. Um, if I can, you know, it's, it's supposed to be, this is roughly a 2 amp, 2 and a half amp or so. Um, yep. Alright, so here's going to be the acid test, I guess, if there's any kind of acid test. We've got power goes to the bridge rectifier, and then from the bridge rectifier it goes to this capacitor, and then on to nothing because I disconnected those two wires. And then the other side of the bridge capacitor goes to the negative of this capacitor, which out of the positive of that capacitor goes to the negative of the capacitor. And then the power board also has this one coming off of this capacitor. So essentially, nothing from here over is connected. <coughs> There's just nothing. There should be basically power going to those two capacitors and the bridge rectifier. So if this pops a breaker, it's either a crap breaker or those capacitors really are crap. So here goes. Okay. So, it hasn't pooped out yet. Then the next step would be to figure out where these go and start troubleshooting down the line. <sighs> I'm hoping to win here. We'll win. It's just going to okay, take a while. So we're making progress. Essentially, this wire, if I connect this back to there where it was, nothing happens. If we connect this to there, that capacitor, yes it's on, so I'm not going to poke my finger in it. But if I put this back to there, nothing happens. If I take this little thin wire back here that goes on this red wire back to the power board, that's where we get big time sparks and arcs and things go pop. So our issue is back here on the power board, which is uh, kind of suspected. 
Okay, progress is happening. Okay, boys and girls, there's still some more work to do, but uh, it appears that this power transformer, this bad boy, the big boy over here, is completely shorted. Without checking the pinouts on it, the um, shell is one of the three contacts, but regardless of which two I pick, um, I'm getting the beep. So that's one. Now this other one over here, across those two, I do not get the beep of doom. I just get a regular diode reading here to the shell. There's a beep here to there. There's not a beep. So one of these is definitely totally toast. And that would be this one. That's toast. So it looks like a Fairchild one. Um, so let's see if we can find one of those. Um, and then we'll move on. Okay, so as we search for the evasive SCE321 transistor, there's two of them there. The cross-referenced one is an NTE181, and those seem to be fairly available. So we're going to have to deal with that before we can really go any farther. So I guess we'll end today's video here. And uh, we have found those, and we'll drop an order, and when they get here, then we'll go back to this again. And my hope is that I don't burn through a crap ton of money getting nowhere. But uh, all the caps that I checked in here were not shorted. There's only one of them, a little tiny one, that doesn't look beautiful. But I mean, these caps are all vintage. A lot of these amp makers use pretty good stuff, so but we gotta deal with that before we go any further. And again, when I first started this, I was worried the speakers would be blown because these power transistors failing is common.